this is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic kids. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, Employment Minister rubbishes claims by Australian seasonal workers. Sidelpa moved to reinstate GCC defeated and Parliament unanimous on adoption bill for persons with disabilities. The Employment Ministry has discarded exploitation claims made by 13 Fijians working under the Australian Seasonal Workers Programme. Minister Semi Koroi Lavisau says while in Australia, their assessment reveals there has been a lot of misinformation reported that has led to sensationalised media reports. Maggie Boyle with this report. Australian media reported in February that Fiji on tour yesterday says the allegations of underpayment and unfair working conditions are lies. The claims are basically fabricated, uh, but uh, there has been uh, a lot of misinformation within the TV footage that was given. And basically, it was engineered to favor the people that were trying to influence our workers. It's a lot of influence uh, and uh, interference from the Fijians that live in Melbourne. Carla Vassal says that a number of improvements will need to be made to the recruitment process to ensure Fijians know what they're getting themselves into. To, to discuss with government on the issues uh, relating to our sister workers uh, program. We visited all the farms. We visited all the workers that are still in the farms. Uh, we had uh, discussions with uh, social partners in Australia. We had a team of uh, workers, uh, officials from the Australian government with us. Basically, we have learned the intricacies of the scheme. There are currently 183 Fijians working in Australia under the program. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. An attempt by the Social Democratic Liberal Party to have the Great Council of Chiefs reinstated was thwarted in Parliament today. Opposition MP Viliam Ngavoka tabled the, peti the petition, saying Sidelpa supporters want the GCC back. However, Ngavoka himself admitted that there was outside influence in the former Great Council of Chiefs and traditional leaders were used for political gain. Granted, Madam Speaker, along the way, during the turbulences of 1980, Things they, they were drawn into areas where they, want, they, where they were not equipped to uh, to deliberate, and granted that impacted on the on, on the on, on this body. Twenty-nine MPs voted against the petition. Sixteen voted in favour, while five did not vote. The adoption bill on the rights of persons with disabilities has been widely accepted by all members of parliament today. The bill was presented by the Attorney General Ayer Said Kayum. We have no reservations. While opposition members agreed to the adoption bill presented by Attorney General Ayasaid Kayum, they still believe more needs to be done to protect the rights of persons with disabilities. I, I just want to put this as a, as a warning bell that uh, we don't want the National Council uh, to become uh, what we've experienced in the past as a body which only talks about policies yet uh, fails to implement. Said Kayum says the bill will enhance their rights. The bill itself captures a number of provisions in terms of the enforcement of rights uh, regarding equality and non-discrimination, uh, accessibility, children with disabilities and of course equal recognition before the law and access to justice, Madam Speaker. Said Kayum says the bill will also help strengthen the various institutions that are looking after the welfare of people living with disability. Ali Kimbia, FBC News.
The Public Accounts Committee is expected to sit in early May for the first time since last year. PAC Chairman Dr. Biman Prasad says they have not had the numbers to convene a meeting. Previous PAC members Sanjeev Patel resigned last year while Semi Kuroi Lavisao took up a ministerial portfolio. We will be uh, meeting hopefully after the uh, sitting of Parliament this week, which is next week. Uh, and in that meeting we will look at the implications of the changes in the standing orders with respect to uh, the Public Accounts Committee and we'll take it up from there. The Biosecurity Authority of Fiji is liaising with its counterparts in the Solomon Islands after the interception of adult giant African snails at the Suva Wharf on Friday. A total of 28 giant African snails and 500 eggs were found on board MV Coral Islander Voyage 112 from Solomon Islands transiting through Kings Wharf, Suva. I can confirm that uh, after the uh, process of irrigation, which basically happened to the six containers, um, at the wharf, there were four dead uh, uh, snails found further, and the vessel was basically taken to the quarantine bay for the vessel to be fumigated. BEF will now fumigate all discharged cargoes from Honiara with methyl bromide gas using snail baits to kill any escaping snails around the Suva port and treating the vessel as well. This is basically for Fiji will be uh, basically transported to uh, and there will be escort of containers so that you ensure that the, the gas is not uh, present or the snail is not present on any of the containers. Still to come on FBC News, distribution of food rations to continue for the next two weeks and fallen soldiers remembered as we mark Anzac Day. Stay with us. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiatong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam in the afternoon. Hi, my name is Salah, I live in Asino. Today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The distribution of food rations and other relief supplies to Cyclone Winston affected areas will continue despite the state of natural emergency coming to an end. The Natural Disaster and Management Office says some divisions are still in need of relief supplies. Savaratambo reports. The National Disaster Management Office will continue to distribute rations in most divisions for the next two weeks. Uh, divisions like um, Eastern and also uh, uh, Northern and uh, Western, they're still pushing out the rations for the second round uh, to complete the 60 days. But since it has been pushed, uh, has been uh, uh, moved over beyond the 60 days because of uh, Zena, tropical cyclone Zena. That has um, uh, disabled the, the commissioners to actually do what they wanted to do on the ground. Akapusi Tuifangalela says that the NDMO team is also distributing seedlings as they want people to get back to their feet quickly. Knowing that what has been damaged from um, tropical cyclone winds and, uh, two months ago, especially the root crops and also the fruits, uh, the vegetables, by now the majority would have been gone. So the replanting process or the food security uh, process that are being done by the Ministry of Agriculture is very important to, you know, to, to bring us back so that we can have um, healthy food to eat in terms of vegetables, fruits, and perhaps kumalo for the root crops. The NDMO will move to the early transition phase in the next two weeks, which mainly includes the rebuilding exercise. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. The government has put in place two initiatives to assist those that were severely affected by tropical cyclone Winston. The $70 million Help for Homes initiative is the first phase, while others will have to wait for the housing rehabilitation plan. Akusita Tale reports. It's a waiting game for the government before they begin work on its long-term recovery and reconstruction plan post-cyclone Winston. The National Disaster Management Office is still waiting for the final post-disaster needs assessment report from the World Bank 
the Asian Development Bank and other agencies. Hopefully by mid this week uh, we will have that report and that will form the basis uh, in which we will uh, draft uh, the recovery and reconstruction plan and the housing rehabilitation uh, will be part of that together with the allocation of resources and timeline. Seri Ratu says this is a lengthy process but has given assurance that Fiji is transitioning from humanitarian and relief side of operations into the recovery and long-term rehabilitation. There is an inter-agency committee uh, headed by uh, the Honorable Minister for Women, Social Affairs and Poverty Alleviation simply because most of the people uh, that uh, are applying uh, fall within that category and most importantly they already have uh, the facilities, particularly with the use of uh, uh, electronic cards for payment purposes, uh, already with the suppliers. Seri Ratu says the government will also provide a housing rehabilitation plan for those still living in temporary tents and shelters. Akosita Tale, FBC News. The contributions made by soldiers from the Pacific Island nations, including Fiji, were remembered at a dawn service in Suva to mark Anzac Day. The day marks the anniversary of the first major military action by Australian and New Zealand forces during the First World War over a century ago. Ellen Stahls has more. Close to 100 people attended the annual Anzac dawn service in Suva this morning. The New Zealand High Commissioner to Fiji, Mark Ramsden, says despite the differences in nationality, a bond is formed between soldiers on the battlefield. So while today we, affect, we reflect on the events of long ago, the response to Cyclone Winston is a heartening reminder that the Anzac spirit, and Fanan Tanga in, in particular, is alive and well, lest we forget. Australian High Commissioner to Fiji, Margaret Toomey, says the spirit of Anzac Day lives on today. From the Boer War to our combined Australia-New Zealand task group Taji in Iraq, and United Missions all around the world, we have served together in many theatres. And in the Anzac spirit of helping your mates, we have served together again here in Fiji. The day was also about teaching the younger generation the significance of this solemn occasion. Anzac Day in Australia and New Zealand is a time for people to reflect on the brave servicemen and servicewomen, both past and present, who've given up their lives to serve their country. Cheryl Lothar of New Zealand, whose family served in the war, says she tries her best to attend Anzac Day annually, and this was her first one in Fiji. So my father was the youngest of five brothers, and his four brothers were all in the services and went off to war. And, and we must be a very lucky family because they did all return. My husband's family, not so lucky. The delivery of good health services in small Pacific Island countries has always been an issue of concern. Steps are now being taken to map out plans to improve on this. Sainiani Boiler reports. Health officers of 14 Pacific Island countries are meeting in Suva to look at ways to improve health services. Our focus is mainly on specialized services that our Pacific friends around New Zealand and Australia and even in the Pacific have come together hand in hand to try and provide a, uh, a better service compared to uh, other uh, previous years. Officers from different island countries with different experiences in the medical field are expected to share their views during the two-day meet. And, uh, and this is the seventh big meeting where we bring in all the, the uh, appropriate administrators from the Pacific to come and tell us what they need and what they want. And then we, uh, we try and get together, well, where can we find the money for this? And we've been uh, ably supported by, uh, by uh, DFAT, Australian Aid. And uh, this winds down in June, and it's hoped by tomorrow we'd know where to from here. The meeting, organized by Strengthening Specialized Clinic Services in the Pacific, is funded by AusAid and the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. The two days meeting ends tomorrow. Senia Nimboila. FBC News. A 26-year-old man who allegedly abducted a Form 3 student at Ballantyne Memorial School last Tuesday has been further remanded. Rohit Kumar, who is charged with one count of abducting a person under the age of 18, appeared before the Suva Magistrates Court today. He has been ordered to file a proper bail application, which will be heard tomorrow. Prosecution objected to his earlier bail, 
saying the offense is serious in nature. Kumar allegedly took the 14-year-old student to Yala Vo Farm in Navosa, where he was arrested by police over the weekend. We turn to sports now. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up tonight, New Sawa Methodist ready to take on the big guns at this year's Coke Games. We'll have this and more after the break. Bula FM number 2 and Seri. The Vodafone Fiji 7's team will move into camp tomorrow to prepare for the Europe leg of the World Series. 19 players will march into camp with one returning to the side in a hope to make it into the final squad. Vasnil Prasad reports. Rato Bulis caliber as a player. Um, unfortunately, he got injured while we are in Lombasa, but you know, we bring him to camp tomorrow, plus the 18 that, that we've had so far. And we're looking forward to, to the next week and a half. With him also clear to join the training is Savena Rawada. The 19 players will go through tough training sessions before 12 will be selected for the last leg. Yeah, Rawada is uh, recovered. Uh, you know, he's had intense uh, physiotherapy done. Uh, you know, that's thanks to our medical team that's helped him out. The side will depart for London next Wednesday and will prepare with the five overseas-based players for a week before the tournament. You know, you don't do too many changes and then it'll disrupt the team's performance going into, into London after Paris. Expect a swift change in the Fiji 7 side for the Paris 7s next month. Mashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. New Sawa Methodist School of Tavuni is confident it will surprise some big names at the Coca-Cola Games this week. The school is also positive it will at least end its long wait for another gold medal at the Games. Vasnil Prasad has more. It might not be the right time to relax, but enjoying the atmosphere here in Suva, Tavionis New Sawa Methodist School is up for the challenge at the Fiji Finals. Especially we go individual to their families. We encourage them please to come. They say the effect of instant they can't buy this. But uh, we tell them we try our best to looking for funds and try to bring them here. 22 athletes will represent the school this year in the Coca-Cola Games and the side hopes to end a five-year wait for a gold medal win. We are aim this year to have three medals, especially from one of our sub-junior girls, Milika. He doing well, it's about 27 seconds. New Sawa is hoping to come strong in the field event. Having won two bronze last year, they're expecting to beg gold, especially in the newly introduced sub-junior boys' javelin. Our javelin sub-junior boys, the first event this year, and he's throwing 40 meter. So we hope that other medals from there, and we hope to our senior uh, Manevisa. While winning a title might be out of their reach, but heads off to these athletes who are here despite facing the hardship and ready to mix it with the big guns. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, Napuka Secondary School from Savo Savo is brimming with confidence as they hope to create some upsets at the Coke Games. The team of 11 athletes went through their first training run at the ANZ Stadium today. They hope to better their record after winning one gold and two bronze last year. For us, uh, Napuka, it's not that easy to send the uh, uh, squad to Suwa, such a remote uh, school, and sending the team across is not that easy. For us, uh, we have been uh, preparing the athletes uh, well. Uh, after our zone meet on week uh, 9, we have another five more weeks of preparation before we send our team across. Eh? Local athletes are being urged to maintain their commitment to sports even when their sporting career has come to an end. This was the main focus behind the Fasenok Athletics Forum, which was held in Suva over the weekend. 
Over 60 participants representing various local sporting federations were addressed by keynote speakers, including former New Zealand Olympic Games heptathlete Sarah Cowley. We've uh, identified in the past we have uh, elite, elite athletes uh, that come up and then after the year of elitism we don't see them um, around at all. So we believe this um, may have something to do, actually it does have to do with their, um, with their professional life, their career. You know, uh, Fasanak has announced that the Team Fiji Assembly for the Rio Olympic Games will be held in Suva in July. The Vodafone Fiji football under-23 side flies out tonight to tour Brazil before the Rio Olympics in August. The team is playing four build-up matches in preparation for its gold medal hopes. Rohit Deo tells us more. The Fiji under-23 side is all set for its Brazil tour. Captain Alvin Singh says after the Spain tour earlier this year, his team is fortunate to play in Brazil. The boys are really excited to go to Brazil. I mean, you know, last time we went to Spain, the boys were really excited, but now we're going to another football country, which is a big thing. So boys are pretty looking forward for the trip and yeah, just going out there doing their best. Singh adds this tour will be a good chance to judge the competition his side will face at the Olympics. Um, we'll go there and get, uh, you know, get used to the weather, what's the atmosphere they're like, and yeah, we'll, we'll get there and gel into the atmosphere. Coach Frank Farina is looking forward to seeing his team play in a country where football is religion and football stars are made. Look, they'll be very tough matches, you know, a great preparation. Uh, it gives the boys a, another experience of a, a different football culture, a different football style. Um, and, you know, after the Spain tour, I think this is... This is perfect for us leading up to the you know, Rio Olympics because obviously it is in Brazil and um, you know, it doesn't matter the teams that we play there. As we know, there's only two things in Brazil, it's religion and football. The Fijians will play four club teams in the build-up to the Rio Games in August. Fiji is pulled with Mexico, Korea and Germany in the Olympic Games. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Minister for Sports, Lesine Tuitumbo, says athletes and officials from Fiji taking part at this year's Rio Olympics in Brazil will be safe from the Zika virus. Uh, the organizing committee has uh, undertaken an assessment of, of venues and facilities and uh, when necessary as fumigated suspected areas, inspection will take place during the Games and next time uh, taken as, as required. The Rio Olympics will be held in Brazil in August. Fijian wingers Nemanja Nandolo and Tony Madilai scored a try each in the Crusaders' 40-14 bonus point win over the Brumbies in Super Rugby last night. But the Crusaders' seventh win on the trot was overshadowed as Nandolo awaits the verdict of Hassan's citing commission hearing regarding his lifting tackle on Brumbies' halfback Thomas Kubeli. Here are the highlights. Trapped at the back by Reedo, has a run from the back, gives it to Nemanja Nandolo and the big man crashes over for the first try. Short ball to Fadi and it's been stolen by Todd. Matt Todd, the race is on. He gets it out to Mothalai, they won't rein him in and there's a wonderful counter-attacking try. Good work by the centre, Savili out to Fonatia. Fonatia to Nandolo. Taking plenty of stopping, what about the offload? It was sensational, and Israel Dag will finish it off. Still going, he's about five metres out. And the Crusaders lining up for the kill, and McKenzie puts it down. The Crusaders are on a bye this weekend, while the Brumbies meet the Highlanders at 5.15pm on Saturday. In English Premier League football today, Leicester City defeated Swansea City 4-0. The win sees the number one team move eight points clear of Tottenham Hotspurs on the points table. Meanwhile, Tottenham plays West Brom at 6.50 a.m. tomorrow and you can watch that match live on FPC TV. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Over 55,000 visitors arrived into the country last month, an increase of over 9% compared to a year earlier. There were increases in tourists from New Zealand, Australia, China and the rest of Asia. However, decreases were recorded in arrivals from United States of America, South Korea, UK and Japan. A majority of visitors came to Fiji for holiday. <laughs> Thank you. 
fine weather prevailed over the country today, looking at the temperatures in all centers, all in the low 30s except Sabu Sabu, which was the lowest on 29 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast is fine apart from brief showers about the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, elsewhere fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. And the further outlook, expect much of the same for the rest of this week, moderate seas. And recapping the main stories for tonight, the Employment Ministry discards exploitation claims made by Fijians working under the Australian Seasonal Workers Programme. An attempt by Sudelpa to have the Great Council of Chiefs reinstated was thwarted in Parliament today. And distribution of food rations and other relief supplies will continue despite the state of natural emergency coming to an end. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to the results from last week's poll question, and we had asked... Should Kitione Talinga be included in the sevens team for the Olympics? An overwhelming 93% said yes. And this week we are asking, are developed countries doing enough to fight climate change? To answer, visit our FBC website. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Bye for now. मैं उरियान खान गुरबो तालेबू के जैसे फेस्टिवल ए ग्रेट है गुरबो में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है गुरबो में एम एलिन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से साय माने हमारे फेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर वन है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जॉइंट सप्लाई में और मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट आई लाइक इट मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट